The seventh lecture of the subject, the history of the English literature, is devoted to the theme, the characteristic features of William Shakespeare's brilliant comedies, the tragedies and the parts of his masterpieces. Objectives. By the end of the lecture, students should be able to introduce with William Shakespeare's word-known written works and plays, to gain the idea of the English literature and the theatre, to gain the idea of William Shakespeare's tragedies and comedies. During this lecture, we are going to discuss the following questions. The first one, William Shakespeare's comedies, which are identifiable as a place full of fun, irony, and dazzling wordplay. The second, William Shakespeare's tragedies with the features of the fatal flaws and external pressure in the stories. Ideas and history of William Shakespeare's famous works. And the last one is... Shakespeare's wind expressions. Shakespeare's plays are a canon of approximately 39 dramatic works written by English poet, playwright and actor William Shakespeare. The exact number of plays as well as their classifications as tragedy, history or comedy is a matter of scholarly debate. Shakespeare's plays are widely regarded as being among the greatest in the English language and are continually performed around the world. The plays have been translated into every major living language. Many of his plays appeared in print as a series of quarters, but approximately half of them remained unpublished until 1623 when the posthumous first folio was published. The traditional division of his plays into tragedies, comedies, and histories follows the categories used in the first folio. Comedies of Shakespeare are abound in disguising and mistaken identities uh, with very convoluted plots that are difficult to follow with very contrived endings. Any attempt at describing Shakespeare's comedies plays as a cohesive group can go beyond the superficial outline. The highly contrived endings of most Shakespeare comedies are the clue of what these plays, all very different, are about. Not one of Shakespearean comedy, no matter how full of life and love and laughter and joy it may be, is without a darkness and its hurt. Much ado about nothing, like Antony and Cleopatra, a tragedy with a comic structure is a miracle of creative writing. Shakespeare seamlessly joins an ancient mythological love story and a modern invented one, weaving them together into a very funny drama. His comedies all draw an attention to a range of human experience with all its sadness, joy, poignancy, tragedy, comedy darkness and lightness. One of the Shakespeare's comedies, The Merchant of Venice, had the love and relationship element. It is often the case that are two couples. One of the women is disguised as a man through most of the text typical of Shakespearean comedy. But the other is in a very unpleasant situation. A young Jewess seduced away from her father by a shallow, rather dull young Christian. The play ends with the, uh, with the lovers all together as usual, celebrating their love and the way things have turned out well for their group. The resolution has come about by completely destroying a man's life. When Shakespeare first arrived in London in the late 1517s or early 1518s, dramatists writing for London's new commercial playhouse, such as The Curtain, were combining two standards of dramatic tradition into a new and distinctively Elizabethan synthesis. Previously, the most common forms of popular English theatre were the Tudor morality plays. These plays generally celebrating piety, 
use uh, personified moral attrib attributes to urge or instruct the protagonist to choose the virtual life of the evil. The characters uh, and plot situations are largely symbolic rather than realistic, as a child Shakespeare would likely have seen this type over the play. The other strand of dramatic tradition was classical aesthetic theory. This theory was derived from Aristotle in Renaissance, in Renaissance England, however, the theory was better known through its Roman interpreters and uh, practitioners. At the universities, plays were staged in a more academic forms as a Roman closed dramas. These plays usually performed in Latin. Shakespeare would have learned this theory at a grammar school where Plautus and especially Terence were key parts of the curriculum and were taught in editions with lengthy theoretical introductions. Before the publication of the first a folio in 1623, 19 of the 37 plays in Shakespeare's uh, canon had appeared in a quarter format. With the exception of Atella, 1622, all of the quarters were published prior to the date of Shakespeare's retirement from the theater in about 1611. It's unlikely that Shakespeare was involved directly with the printing of any of his plays, although it should be noted that two of his poems, Venus and Adonis and The Rape of Lucrece, were almost certainly printed under his direct supervision. Shakespeare produced most of his known works between 15 89 and 1613. His early plays were primarily comedies and histories and are regarded as some of the best work produced in these genres. Until about 1608, he wrote mainly tragedies, among them Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, Othello, King Lear, and Macbeth, all considered to be among the first works in the English language. In the last phase of his life, he wrote tragic comedies, also known as romances, and collaborated with other playwrights. Since its first recorded production, Hamlet has engrossed playgoers, thrilled readers, and challenged actors more so than any other play in the Western canon. No other single work of fiction has produced more commonly used expressions, earliest known text Quattro 1603. As Shakespeare's play opens, Hamlet is mourning his father, who has been killed and lamenting the behavior of his mother, Gertrude, who married his uncle Claudius within a month of his father's death. The ghost of his father appears to Hamlet, informs him that he was poisoned by the Claudius, and commands Hamlet to avenge his death. Though instantly galvanized by the ghost's command, Hamlet decides on further reflection to seek evidence in corroboration of the ghostly visitation, since he knows the devil can assume a pleasant shape and can easily mislead a person whose mind is perturbed by intense grief. Hamlet adopts a guise of melancholic and mad behavior as a way of deceiving Claudius and others at court, a guise made all the easier by the fact that Hamlet is genuinely melancholic. King Lear, earliest known text, Quattro, 1608. King Lear is a play that explores the relationship between appearance and reality and the tragic consequences of trusting in appearance more than reality. Lear divides uh, his kingdom between his two eldest daughters because they express their undying love and devotion to him in uh, exaggerated language. Cordelia, who is disgusted by her sister's phoniness, refuses to flatter her father, so in a rage he disinherits her and banishes her. She marries the king of France, who will later lead an army against her sisters. Leah very soon learns that his uh, older two daughters' words were empty promises made simply so they could cite power. Once they have his land and goods, he becomes a nuisance. They humiliate him and cast him aside. 
In a parallel plot, the Earl of Gloucester is manipulated by his uh, illegitimate son Edmund into thinking that his real son Edgar is plotting against him. Both powerful men are humbled by their realization that they were deceived. By the end of the play, both Leah and the Earl of Gloucester have learned the hard way who is faithful to them. In acts of poetic justice, Goneril and Regan are deceived by Edmund. Goneril kills Regan, then commits suicide. And Edgar kills Edmund. Cardelia is uh, hanged by Edgar's decree and Leah dies of sorrow. Nevertheless, order is restored in the kingdom. Macbeth, 1605-1606. Macbeth is one of Shakespeare's most stimulating and popular dramas. Renaissance records of a detailed account of an original production of Macbeth has Shakespeare's plays in performance are scarce, but survived, thanks to Dr. Simon Foreman. Earliest known text, first folio, 1623. A brave Scottish general named Macbeth receives a prophecy from a tree of witches that one day he will become king of Scotland. Consumed by ambition of his wife, Macbeth murders King Duncan and takes the Scottish throne for himself. He is then wrecked with guilt and paranoia. Romeo and Juliet, 1594-1595, celebrated for the radiance of its lyr lyric poetry. Romeo and Juliet was tremendously popular from its first performance, the sweet wish press shared by young Tudor lovers throughout the realm were often referred to as a note but pure. Romeo and Juliet, earliest known text, quarter 1597. Romeo and Juliet fall in love at a party, but they come from families which hate each other. They are sure they will not be allowed to marry. Nevertheless, held by Friar Lawrence, they marry in a secret instead. Unfortunately, before their wedding night, Romeo kills Juliet's cousin in a duel, and in the morning he is forced to leave her. If he ever returns to the city, he will be put to death. Juliet's parents told her she must marry Paris. Her parents don't know she is already married. She refuses in the beginning but later agrees because she plans to fake her death and escape to be with Romeo forever, again with the help of Friar Lawrence. Friar Lawrence designs the plan. He gives Juliet a sleeping potion. She appears to be dead and was put in a tomb. However, Romeo does know about the plan, visits her grave, thinks she is dead and kills himself. When Juliet finally wakes up, she discovers that Ro Romeo is died and then kills herself. Julius Caesar, 1599-1600. Also, there were early Elizabethan plays on the subject of Julius Caesar and his turbulent rule. Shakespeare's penetrating study of political life and ancient Rome is the only version to recount the demise of brutes and the other conspirators. Earliest known text, 1st Folio, 1623. Julius' conspirators convince uh, Caesar's friend Brutus to join their association plot against Caesar. To stop Caesar from gaining too much power, Brutus and the other conspirators kill him on Idas of March. Mark Antony drives the conspirators out of Rome and fights them in a battle. Coriolan, 1607-1608, the last of Shakespeare's great political tragedies chronicling the life of the mighty warrior Caius Marcus Coriolan. Earliest known text, first folio, 1623. Roman general Coriolan makes his name defeating an enemy army and defending Rome. The Senate nominates his a consul, but he cannot win the people's vote. So he is banished from Rome and uh, allies with his old enemy. He comes to attack Rome, his mother persuades him not to, and his newfound ally kills him far for the betrayal.
Many of the lines in Shakespeare's plays are among the most quoted in literature and even the most misquoted. Shakespeare's works were filled with references to the highs and lows of everyday life, love and death, and are still highly relevant today. In this very slide, given Shakespeare's most famous quotes, to be or not to be, that is the question, Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1. All the world stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, as you like it, Act 2, Scene 7. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness trust upon them. Twelfth Night, Act 2, Scene 5. What's in a name? A rose by any name would smell as sweet. Romeo and Juliet, Act 2, Scene 2. This is the end of our lecture. Conclusion Shakespeare's plays before the publication of the first folio in 1623. Shakespeare's retirement from the theater in about 1611. It's unlikely that Shakespeare was involved directly with the printing of any of his plays, also it should be noted the two of his poems. Shakespeare's early plays were primarily comedies and histories and are regarded as some of the best work produced in these genres. Until about 1608 he wrote many tragedies, among them Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, Othello, King Lear and Macbeth. Shakespeare produced most of his known works between 1589 and 1613. Here given the questions for self-checking. Here given the glossary concerning our lecture. In this very slide, given the literature for further reading.